If you have not looked at the news, then you probably aren't aware that the world is in a pretty bad economical state. I mean, there are rumors of recession everywhere. A recession. Recession. It's recession. A recession. We're in a recession. Recession. And I thought it would be interesting to look at what the best recession predictors actually are. Now, every country sort of has a different way to explain what a recession means, and they have different indicators to show when their economy is actually in a recession. For a lot of countries, it is two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth, but sometimes this always isn't the case. There are also a lot of other factors that come into this, along with inflation and just other indicators as well, but there are some really weird models out there that actually predict when a recession might happen. Some of these are accurate and some of these are accurate and just make no sense. So I thought we would take a look at some of the more interesting recession predictors and also take a look at what some of the more accurate ones that people actually look at are using today. <laughs> And at the end of this video, we are going to be uncovering the best recession predictor we have ever seen. And it is something that I'm calling the Warren Buffett effect, but we'll get to that a little bit later. The first recession predicted that we need to talk about though is the yield inversion curve. This is a pretty common one and it basically compares the 10 year treasury yield curve and the two year treasury yield curve in America. Now, as an Australian, this probably doesn't help me too much because it isn't actually representing my own country's economical positioning. But since America is such a huge dominant player in the economic world, it is really important to pay attention to this. Basically, Basically, whenever the 10-year treasury and the two-year treasury yields inverse, this is one of the leading predictors to a recession. And it's been pretty accurate in the past, but again, this isn't necessarily proven to be 100% true because sometimes when this yield curve does actually invert, it doesn't always lead to a recession and no one really wants to come out and say that they are in a recession. So this just gives it even less validity. It is still really interesting to look at. And obviously treasury yields are in a really interesting place in America. People like Warren Buffett have been selling huge stakes in companies like Apple just to raise their cash to potentially buy treasury yields because they are at such a good yield at the moment. So whether this is an indication that Warren Buffett knows something that we don't, or maybe he's just trying to play this ultra safe and basically get a guaranteed 4.5% return on his money might just be the way to go. Again, these yield curves can invert without America actually going into a recession. So this might not be the best indicator, but it is still one of the most accurate ones and something that a lot of people do look at. The next one though is my absolute favorite, and this has to be the most accurate recession predictor I've ever seen. Definitely not, but it's still really interesting. This is actually known as the Big Mac Index. Yes. This basically looks at Big Macs around the world from over 120 countries and is going to basically convert the amount of dollars that a Big Mac is worth in a local currency to what it's worth in the US dollar. Obviously, if there is a disparity, then the local currency is most likely going to be undervalued and that could always lead to that given country being in a recession. Now, is this something that people are actually going to use to see if they are in a recession? No, of course not. People are not going to track the prices of Big Macs from country to country to see if they have changed, but it is still really interesting to look at. And this is really only scratching the surface of some of the weirdest recession predictors we have ever seen. I feel like we do need to take a look at some of the more important indexes that actual economists might look at. And one of them is known as the Baltic Dry Index or the BDI. This basically reflects the cost of shipping raw materials from one place to another. This is a pretty good good indicator, maybe not for a recession necessarily, but just if there is economic slowdown in one economy. Obviously, Australia is a big exporter of raw materials. We ship a lot of iron to places like China, who are a massive manufacturer in the world for lots of different things. And they've been building a bunch of houses lately. And even though there is a little bit of a crisis going on with a lot of their development companies that we can talk about in another video, they were a huge buyer of our exported iron. 
So when they started to stop buying iron ore from us and we were exporting less, that was definitely a sign that the economies around the world were starting to slow down. And this is something that I feel like a lot of people are actually looking at. This isn't necessarily just for Australia, though. I mean, every country in the world is going to be exporting and importing different goods. That is just what globalization has done to the world today. But when there are economic slowdowns, shipping, materials, items, goods, whatever it is from one place to another does seem really expensive. And maybe these less essential goods are going to be cut back, which means shipping businesses aren't going to be making as much money. And in effect, this just slows down the economy on its own. Again, can an economy go into a recession while keeping shipping rates up? Yes. And can economies avoid a recession even when shipping goods and resources is slowing down? Also, yes. So I guess there really isn't a thing as a 100% accurate recession predictor, but I feel like the BDI actually is pretty important. Before we move on to the secret special Warren Buffett recession indicator, we need to look at one more last one that I found that is known as Dr. Copper. Now, again, is this something that economists might look at? Maybe but I don't know how accurate this is going to be. Basically, it takes a look at one of the rare earth minerals or resources that we have in the world today. Copper is used in almost every electrical product that we have. And basically what this indicator does is takes a look at the price of copper and people have found that there is sort of a correlation between the price of copper and how healthy an economy is. When the price of copper is rising, this usually means that there is an increased demand for this, which means that economies around the world are actually doing really Really well, focusing on expansion, building, and so much more. There is a lot of money going into development. So obviously, when there is more demand for copper, it means that countries and businesses are spending a lot of money on development, resources, and building up their businesses. And conversely, when the opposite happens, when the price of copper declines, it means that businesses are cutting back, consumers are cutting back, maybe there aren't as many people redoing their houses. And this is just a sign that maybe the economy is slowing down. But if you were sitting there trying to predict when a recession was going to happen, would you just stare at the charts of the copper price index every single day? I mean, maybe, I don't know but probably not. There would be a bunch of other things that you would look at, and this is probably one of them. But it is finally time to look at my brand new Warren Buffett 100% true recession predictor that I've come up with five minutes ago. Is this 100% accurate? No. Is it 0% accurate? Probably. But basically what this is, is that whenever we get a report of what Warren Buffett is doing with his own portfolio, I mean, this just shows a good representation of where the economy is. Now, Warren Buffett is widely regarded as the best investor of all time. Not only does he manage billions and billions of dollars, but I feel like just the investments that he has made, he's so calculated, he's so smart, and he barely loses an investment. He doesn't really make too many wrong choices either. And you could argue the only thing that he does wrong is selling a company too early. But whenever he does sell, it usually means that there is something else going on. He recently just sold 50% of his Apple position. 50%, which is a huge amount of cash that has basically been injected into Berkshire Hathaway. But the other really interesting thing is Warren Buffett doesn't really sell half a position. In the past, when he sells a company, he usually sells out of it completely, or he does just take a little bit off the top. So 50% is sort of a weird number. Now, he has raised billions and billions of dollars from this sale, and it does look like there could be the potential that he just pours all of this cash into treasury yield bonds because you can get a really good return on them, like 4.5%, which is a crazy number. And this is guaranteed because it's paid for by the US government. So maybe what Warren Buffett is doing is just he's really concerned about what the economy is going to do over the next month six months, 12 months, 18 months, who knows? But maybe he's just raising cash so that whatever happens, he knows that he's going to be getting guaranteed 4.5% return on his money. Now, is this a recession predictor? Well, I probably would say no, but I think this is a really good look at what the smartest investor in the world is thinking. If he's not buying any new businesses, if he's not opening brand new positions, and instead selling off billions and billions of dollars of one of the best companies in the world then it's probably a sign that maybe the economy isn't as strong as we first thought. And that is why the only recession predictor that I think we need to focus on is the Warren Buffett Index. Should you guys listen to me? Probably not, but you know what? I trust Warren, so yeah. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one.